but it, um, <laughs> okay, so um, Krista can see, like Krista, yeah, Chris can see, I, I assume can see everybody in the room or not. Um, yep. We'll go around quickly because I, Chris, I don't think we've, um, certainly we have guests from um, Dresden here as well. So why don't we do this again quickly for Chris? Chris is from the Island Institute. And what is the Island Institute? Um, well, Chris, do you want to explain what the Island Institute is? You got the 20 second version of that? Yes, it's a community development organization based in Rockland, been around since 1983, works on, um, some priorities around climate, economic development, and um, leadership, community leadership. But economic development is where our broadband work grew out of. So we support community-driven broadband planning through planning grants, including one with Cassett got recently. And you're out of money now? Temporarily? Uh, pretty much, although we have some small, if, if communities are looking for, um, some matching grant. Uh, we have some left in this fiscal year and we'll have more available starting July 1st uh, and Dresden would be able to apply for those. Um, and I know my co my colleague, Emily, had been in touch with some of, some of the folks from Dresden as well. Great. So for your benefit, and we have another person who just came in, can you go around again saying where we're from? Richard, do you want to start again? I'm Richard Lips, uh, lived here in Wiscasset, uh, retired uh, academic from the University of Florida, and a scientist. What kind of science? Genetics. I'm, I'm uh, Don Gleason from Dresden, business owner, and uh, let's just say running for selection as well. And I'm Judy's uncle from Dresden. Marty Fox from Wisconsin. Justin Jones from Wisconsin. I'm Peter Gaxi from Dresden. Uh, I used to work as a physicist, and now I uh, am a business program in Windows computers. I'm Larry Rhymes from Wisconsin. I'm associated with the chairman of Wisconsin Senior Center. Uh, Carl Dickstein from Wiscasset and chair of the committee um, and retired. That's probably most people are. <laughs> and, uh, Evan Gutkowski uh, from Wiscasset on this committee and uh, the connectivity booster, which is sort of like a support position for all of Lincoln County getting broadband projects started up for people who been throughout all the town. <laughs> So um, we need, for those of you who are on the committee, we need to, and Richard, did you finally get approved? I was sworn in today. Yeah. <laughs> so you can vote, um, uh, but you weren't here. For, no, you. It wasn't. Here. Yeah, you weren't. Um, so can we have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the last one. Second it. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Um, so moved. Um, one give us an update. Obviously, we're making progress with um, the next one is progress with neighboring towns to collaborate on grants. We're making some progress. You guys are all here. So, <laughs> this is yeah, this is a lot of progress. Yeah. Um, I sat down with Judy and Daniel and Mary Ellen Barnes last week to work on a planning grant with Connect Maine. Uh, roughed out a draft and then got further advice from Stephanie at Connect Maine there's a planning grant and also a startup grant and she told me that currently there's no planning grant window open so we're definitely going for a startup grant which makes more sense as she explained that also so um that's about five thousand dollars together with the 7500 that dresden put in and they'll be sending that draft to daniel uh today this afternoon or tomorrow and, and then Oh, I'm sorry. And, and I can get your guys' emails too if you'd like to review. It's about five questions, nothing too crazy about it. What were you going to ask? Uh, whether Woolwich, whether you're doing Yeah, I'm going to send the well. same copy, just Woolwich version over to them. And then all they have to do is have their board approve it and send it into Connect Maine. And I think she said they review it 
So they review it monthly, and I think they send out um, the awards every fifth of the month. I think I'll have to double check. Has Woolwich uh, approved any money? Is there yep, $7,500. So you all probably know, um, of course, we want you to have high speed internet, but it's also in our favor to work collaboratively um, for um, uh, reducing costs on what this will all cost each town if, if we all do it together. Plus we get priority, um, we get a little bit more points in the, in the funding process if we work collaboratively. So it's not all um, un unmotivated. <laughs> So, um, anything else? Questions for Evan or? Yes. Yeah. So, what did you do? You work for the county or something? So, I started this position through the Maine Broadband Coalition that set up uh, groups all over the state to basically act as a support person and for grants, for public outreach, for anything surrounding the whole broadband process of getting started up started up and that's called a connectivity booster. That's my position. Okay. And I work in Goodkowski, G-O-O-D-K-O-W-S-K-Y, not an I. And I work in a lot with uh, Krista on Zoom here and with Mary Ellen Barnes with the Lincoln County Regional Planning Commission. So that's my bit. Um, nope, it's just a project job basically for this year for a few months because up to now there was no money involved and now the state's got to shovel the money, get projects moving. So that's how I got into it, this this role anyway. And I just made a note in the chat in case you're, you're seeing it that um, this was funded by Connect Maine uh, to, to Maine Broadband Coalition to have uh, initiatives all across the state to support regional collaborations across the whole state. Um, so again, you know, Evan was identified for Lincoln County as this extra capacity support and it, main connectivity authority. Uh, the new agency with Andrew Butcher as president is looking to continue funding this kind of program. So whether whether Evan's able to continue in the role or, or someone else, you know, there's hope that um, that uh, just continuing to invest in kind of on the ground capacity will help move projects forward toward infrastructure funding. So I, I think uh, if there's aren't any more questions on this, um, the big um, issue for the meeting is outreach um, for our for the town and obviously your towns your town as well. Um, how to um, educate the public about what we're trying to do and why it's important and build the base of support because eventually it's going to require um, a commitment from the town beyond the $75,000. Um, we don't know exactly what that is. We're doing our studies now to determine the final cost. We don't know how much grant money we would be able to get, but the, the goal is to get as much grant money as you can um, or low cost loans to reduce the investment and the burden on the town. Um, but all of this requires that the town buy into this. <laughs> and so um, I have to say, this is not my strength. Outreach, communications, marketing, it is not what I know how to do. Um, I just know it's important and, um, uh, and we need to start it. I, I pulled down a couple of um, um, pieces and it's all over the internet. Um, Krista, I think I asked you, I got one draft that was a half completed draft and uh, it was a first draft in June of 21, it said broadband survey guide. I don't know if that came from you or the coalition, do you know? Is there anything familiar to you about how to do this outreach and do surveys? I'm just curious because I've just sent it out to people with the years. Um. Yeah, I think a lot of the surveys have just built on each other. And so probably what, what you have um, in front of you, I mean, every community can improve on it, but you know, I could send you about 10 different surveys and a lot of them look pretty similar. And, and Evan, Evan is definitely your kind of good, good resource for 
um, having worked with some of these surveys recently in other towns um, and maybe having the best info to draw from. Um, yeah, and I think he can attest based on our experience in Southport last night and recent experiences in Newcastle that doing as you know, inform and communicate early and often um, through this process, you're gonna be a lot more successful um, down the road. So I had, after I got your email, Carla, I had a, um, an email I had sent to the Newcastle committee a few months ago that I'll send on to you um, kind of specifically related to this community outreach um, process. Uh, it's all over the web. I mean, there are lots of examples of it. I happen to, I happen to um, uh, share in North Carolina, uh, but it's, it's similar in terms of who, who are we trying to market to, uh, target audiences. I mean, and the, and the survey comes out of that. My own feeling was the one that um, Evan worked on in Damascata um, was pretty simple. Um, fairly short, even though I think it could be shorter. And, um, you know, got mostly to the, got to the point, I think, of what we're looking at. Um, I think we wanna know um, what the current status is in terms of connectivity and interest, and um, also whether people actually know how to use the internet or need the softer skills that um, digital equity would provide. Um, and also, um, you know, what's the, the experience has been in the pandemic, because that conceivably is going to push more people to want better internet. And I'm not sure at this stage whether we asked the question I put at the end, which is, um, you know, would you, would you be interested in switching to, you know, high speed internet, high uh, fiber network? if it were the same price or, or even lower. And that requires education. <laughs> I started going around in circles while I was trying to do this quickly about, well, what are you trying to do? There's got to be an elevator, you know, short paragraph in the beginning of this to explain it. And conceivably, it goes out after some um, um, publicity in town that this is going out and what the broadband came is about. I mean, we've had a couple of articles, but not enough just, you know, to, for people to know what we're about. So, um, Evan, you've had experience with this already. Do you want to talk about what you think we should do before we get or how to position it or if there's anything different we would do on this one than we did on the other? I'm suggesting it be even shorter, but... Um, Sure, is you, good. You, you've got the experience. Well, in an effort to uh, collaborate a little, I wanted to make like the first question: Do you live in Woolwich, Dresden, Wiscasset? Then you can we can all just have the same survey to put out. There's no multiple duplication doing that, and then we can just sort later on through Survey Monkey based on what town they said and, and compile the data that way. Um, this is this one they have in front of you. It's obviously built with specific questions in mind based on paper Scott. So we would obviously change that. Um, I'm trying to think of. Did it, did it give you the information you needed for Dan or Scott? Or you... I felt so. And this is just as much helpful information for the committee in the town as it is a political tool to basically say, hey, this is happening. Do people want to get behind it? It's, it's as much free advertising that something's happening as it is data that we can pull from. Evan, do you, have you seen the results of the Lincoln County Regional Planning Commission uh, Connect main, yeah, the seven towns survey that was done in 2018? Yeah, yeah I was not a fan of that one. Yeah, um, but I think. It, it was just too long and um yeah uh, yeah and I'm, not Agreed. Of, I'm not a fan of open questions unless yeah. that's the only way you're going to get the information i mean i want i wanted as many closed questions as possible so it would be yeah. easier my, my only point was a lot of people in your communities took that, not a lot probably, but just 
taking the time to review the data that did come in and, and ensure that people who took that survey, um, people can get confused when there's multiple surveys on the same topic. So I think just being fully aware of what happened in that process and how to frame this survey, but totally agreed um, a, a five, five to 10 minute survey max is, is what people should be taking. Um, so would, is it helpful to go through at this point some of the questions I had in my proposed edits, or um, do you want to say anything more about how you used it? Okay. So, um, where did I put mine? The only thing that I would add is one, one of the most important pieces of data we can get out of this is what people are actually paying, because we can look up what websites say for Spectrum and Comcast and others all day long but when people are bundling and they've been tiered into another group because they're grandfathered into an old plan we don't know what people are actually paying so rather you can try and ask questions about if they're bundling tv and that type of stuff when they're paying for their internet but um it's i think it's just as helpful to know what they're paying total so we can put that we can insert that sometimes you have it in the original no, i think i asked if you bundle and then i asked what you paid oh okay so, okay, I need to put it back. A lot of people are able to pull that out of their monthly bill and say, specifically, this is what I'm paying for this. A lot of people don't know what they're looking at. Yeah, you have to do it to take the um, uh, state speed test. And I'm always like, oh, God, where does that go? Like, you know what you're actually paying. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to keep. What is your address? We want to know that, and especially if nobody has, you know, if somebody doesn't have internet. And um, is it a question of they don't have physical, act, they don't have access to um, a network like Spectrum or that they can't afford it? And um, what we need, particularly for build out and infrastructure, is identifying as many of the places that really don't have access uh, because um, the cable company Spectrum won't go there. It turns out Dresden has more of those than those passive tests, which actually makes you more desirable for a brand. <laughs> so, um, and so we want to know that. Um, I thought a little bit about the second question um, where you said, are you responding and it's a local business or an individual. And I thought they could be both, especially if they're self-employed. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to add that so it wasn't confusing. Um, uh, and you would just say, or both. And that's number 10 also. Mm -hmm. or no. It's number two. No, I'm saying later on, there's another question about using the internet that you're self-employed or you work from home. Oh, yeah. So, and I had a question. We can fix it. With that. Yeah, right. Anyway. Internet. We can talk about that. Um, and then it says, we want to know if they have internet service here, yes or no. Pretty, pretty easy to want to know. And if no, why not? And then um, I suppose on everything we should say other in case there's a surprise. Like this is a list, but we could say anything else, please please um, specify or please explain. People could have a couple of lines going to their home and they could get DSL, which is a way. So I mean, yes, somebody can have internet service at this address. Wouldn't DSL be to everybody internet service? Um, some, some places you can get um, DSL to the point that it's doesn't do anything for you. You technically have an internet connection, but maybe you can send emails. That's about it. But I know you got a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. After yeah, afterward, I can. Yeah. Just people yeah. out there, if we don't answer them all now, so anything yeah. you want to talk about availability, uh, DSL is part of the availability. Yeah, yep, that's on number five. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, as we get down the pike here. Um, but your your point was that everybody can, shouldn't be able to do this. Um, if you're close enough to the box, whatever the box is, 
But you still have to pay for you still have to pay for DSL, right? Yeah. So it may be a question of um, too expensive. It's too expensive for people, which is an option on number four that would cover that even if they can get it. They're not. They could possibly get cable, but they can't afford it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you have um, say roughly a half a dozen ways that somebody could get connected to the internet. Yeah, and some are, yeah, that's right. And, and have you covered all of them here? Yep. Okay. We could make, there's only one designation under number five that we could make it satellite versus a Starlink service. It would be the only position. Start, what's the difference here? I so Starlink is satellite, but traditional satellite internet through either like Dish Network or Direct TV is much, much, much slower. And then Starlink gets a lot. Why don't we put it in? Because some yeah. people are just Starlink is an individual satellite for you, right? Just just people. like every other satellite company, but it's, it's slightly different technology and it's a lot faster than. Yeah. But it's still slow, right? Would we accomplish something if we made a statement comparing what broadband might do for you as opposed to DSL, as opposed to um, yep. cable, as opposed yep. to because. We're asking for a lot of comparisons that people can't make because they never right. seen it. Well, if they haven't seen it, they'd say, um, you know, they don't have it. I think they'd say they don't have it. Do you have internet service at this address? Well, that's one thing. Do you, do you, do you sign up for it or is it available to you? Uh, that could be confused. Do you have, I think what we're trying to say is- Do you, do you, subs do you subscribe? Do you yeah. subscribe? So we can change yeah. the wording on that. To the internet to, service yeah. at this address. Yeah. And that could be any way they want to interpret it. Then you could say, what type do you have down here? I mean, the thing that you're raising is the education part that I don't think is in the survey, but it's part of what we need to do for education. Well, yeah, I, I don't think that people can accurately answer some of the questions if they don't know what's going on. You mean the outcome of the uh, survey? Uh, no, uh, broadband. What's broadband going to provide to you if this doesn't? Is it going to be two times faster, three times faster? Am I going to, you know, what is it going to do? For right. Me? We need we need we need a statement, certainly as an introduction to the survey of what broadband is and what high high speed fiber networks are. And, and that shouldn't be more than maybe a paragraph on the survey itself. What we might want to do with the survey is do a one pager getting at why high, why we're interested in the high speed internet, why that's the technology of the future, and why it's a good investment, um, why we're working on it, because it's a good investment for the community, both now and in the future. And that would be that would be bullet points, it'd be one pager, so it's digestible, and probably we need to get that out with the survey. So to answer your questions, I think it probably should go out several different times in several different ways, not just for the right, survey. right? Because I, I'm yep. sitting here and I don't know the answers to many of these yeah. questions. <laughs> well, I've been at it well, not as long as some people, but for the last six years, becoming familiar with this stuff, and I couldn't, you know, I can't exactly explain how fiber works and what it looks like. I get caught up on the terms. So I go to other people that know it better. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, you know, so we, we need these pieces to do the education, absolutely. Um, I think for this, we're looking at what is it we want to tell the town from the information we collect from each person? And what do we want to know to be able to go forward in an application um, for funding and whether people are actually going to buy into this. I mean, the bottom line is somebody's got to purchase it. Um, and even if you subsidize it, you got to have enough people that see why this is important and why they would jump on it. Um, and we're at a disadvantage in some respects because we do have cable. Um, and it's a question of how dissatisfied people are either with the pricing of a monopoly service or um, wanting much better, reliant, broadband, faster. 
I'm getting ahead of myself, but I guess what I'm trying to accomplish here is what's the basis for what we what we want to get out of this effort, which is a big effort to get it to a lot of people and get a response. And without overwhelming them, you know, the two more questions. So I think we're on the way. I haven't already did a lot of work on this. Well, we should ask ourselves is what are we going to do with this, this information? So the question doesn't. We're not going to do anything with the question or the answer up to the question. Sure. Let's not have it on it. Yep. Yeah, so exactly. That's the first thing. So, exactly. Um, and the shorter it is, the better. Right. I think we'd have better response if we could just hand it out someplace and have people, if they consider the church and they can have it afterwards. Yep. I don't throw it out in five minutes. And it back to us, and we've got the results. I, th I think there are multiple. We could definitely ways. make it just like this and yeah. then double sided, and then, yeah, some of the suppers at the senior center and other, all of any type of. Because yeah. they're laying out, got, what, 100 responses? Right. So and then, a lot of money. Can you wait until this over Facebook? Yeah, once we once we figure out what we're going to have for a survey, and that's the. It has to be multi meeting, so it has to be rainbow, yeah, fuelable. And then for. For you guys in Dresden, it might be it might be viable to send it out by mail because you've got plenty of people that don't have cable at all and only have DSL in there or satellite and they're most in the dark. So those people, it's worth either mailing or going right up to their door and saying, "Hey, this is what's up." And those people are generally pretty receptive when DSL and satellite are their only options. That's where the structure of those should be consistent across yep. the various platforms. Yep. It should be a half page. I'm not, there's some advantage to having a tear off, right? So if you just have a couple pages that explains yep. why we're doing the survey. What's yeah, and then they can hold on to that so we'll have relevant information. So they can they do that. that, or it's a half that leads them directly into this. One of the issues I see with the questions, because I frame things in a Okay, here is my here are the demographics. So what town are you from, for instance? And then here, here are you know the current user services or some other user profile because there's questions in here, you know, is there a student, is there a business? Um, so how we structure it again, try to have only a single piece of paper. Well, I or yeah, and some of the demographics I don't know if we need. What what the key questions for me were: Do you have what you need in terms of current? Is your current service adequate for what your needs are? And that changed for a lot of people in the pandemic. Um, and whether it was because of student issues or um, telehealth or your business. The bottom line is whether it's satisfactory capacity for what you need. So we might, that's further down, but we might be able to look at that more closely, whether we really need the specifics on that. And if there was a rationale for that, then we'll put it back in. Um, we do, did I say, yeah, I said keep the monthly cost of internet. Not, it's, it's um, what's the rest of this? It's, it's, Number seven, what is the monthly cost of your internet service if bundled? Please note other services such as phone or cable TV. Do you, do you think somebody's going to take it? Well, if they don't take the time, then if we ask them to bundle service um, and we ask them to do that, is it more likely that they will respond to it or just skip it? I think they know what they're paying total for a bill, but if you ask them to go get the bill, figure out the exact price you paid for internet, that's when people slow down and then they have different rates that these companies will give if you're in a bundle. So us, you know. So what we could do is the first question being um, what is your monthly cost with a blank that they should know and then a um, checkbox. Yeah, yeah. If you bundle phone and TV in there. Yeah, we have to separate that if um, in terms of a different question so that we can tally it differently, I think. Um, or else they may not respond to anything. Do you have a suggestion? Yeah, um, lately I've been getting a lot of surveys by telephone. I hate them. Mm -hmm. And um, this is an enormous survey. And two months ago, uh, I believe it was, you know, this past select board, 
sent out a card with a stamp on it about are you in favor of um, marijuana? Marijuana. Yeah. And yet there were three or four choices in the green. Great. <laughs> and uh, um, I wonder if it would be possible to do something like that, a card with maybe two tricky questions on it and something to identify a number or a letter. And those that come back, they, they are then um, sent another card with a, three or four more questions. Uh, and uh, so that way, you're not alienating people with this, you know, this cumbersome sure. survey. Sure. Yes, but it's also a card. Every time you do a mailing, that that's a problem. Um, I don't know if you saw the planning one from the planning. That was huge. I mean, I don't know what the response was, but it was much too long and complicated. Yeah, that one was probably four times, four or five or more times. And it, had, it, had an, it had ambiguities there that were hard to answer. So, um, so we're at least we're trying to be, but uh, keep, keep that in mind because I, I filled out that part too, a little late, but I filled it out because it was easy. I get it, but it's expensive to do those mailings, particularly multiple. Yeah. And there we got about 150 responses from that. It was, it was short and sweet. That's what I'm saying. You have to hand it out to a group and get it, get it that way. Yeah. Because mailing is just worth the money. Yeah. Responses. And I think on the June election, we should plan on right. having people at each town poll to try and get them that way. Was cast, we'll probably have more people because we'll vote on the budget that day, but there'll still be people that show up. Um, okay, so um, we, were, we were on a monthly service call. There may be a way to break that out so we don't break the first answer with the second one, um, or that we, we get a total cost. And if they say cable, it's pretty easy to. Um, well, I don't know. We'll talk about it. What's, what's the better way to get that question? Um, we, that's a, an important question because we want to know what the price points are, or particularly the cable, which is what we can keep with putting in a fiber network. You, you used the, the word monopoly earlier. Mm -hmm. I think that's worth repeating because if you say right now you're subscribing to a monopoly, yeah. And everybody knows. Well, we got a great response at the November election, with, you know, for a petition. I forgot what it was, Marty. Um, oh. Broadband. No, we're asking you to do something for broadband when you were doing oh. the hour of power. And that was um, the speed test. Oh, the speed test. That's right. Thank you. And as soon as we talked about what we were trying to do, I mean, people got it. They're outraged at aspect of raising the prices, continuing and having that power. Um, they've raised it about three times since then. Yeah, and I mean, we're, that's part of the education that, um, particularly if our committees want to and towns want to look at municipal broadband, that's the argument there is it's not a monopoly, it's town owned, and you can actually make money in the long term once you pay off the mail. But anyway, that's down the point. But yeah, it does, it does raise all kinds of centers. Absolutely. Um, so, um, Evan, I think you, I, I repositioned your question about satisfaction because we're asking them what they pay, what they have. And I put, are you satisfied with your internet service? Mm -hmm. If not, why not? Mm -hmm. And when I, I would put down various options uh, there, I think I put them down, too many outages, um, cost too much for customer service. And then always a, a section to say other reason. Somebody might say they keep, you know, to your point, they keep raising the price on me. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's cost, but they may want to be more specific. So I put that one there rather than at the end. And then I had questions. That's question um, eight. Excuse me. Can you ask me how you're satisfied with service Isn't that a bit abstract like, that was our that was our goal just to get a quick thermometer and see literally how many people are like completely fine with what they have and they don't care what people are like middle about it 
and which people are fuming. Just to kind of back to what Richard was saying about simplicity, just get a red, yellow, green of where people are at and, and kind of separate it that way. That was our goal. If everybody was really fine with it, we'd be in trouble. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you'll get, you'll probably see like two, two to three percent maybe of people that will say, yep, I'm satisfied. But they've got cable and they don't do anything with it probably. They probably watch their stations or whatever they do and answer a couple emails so they wouldn't know what they're missing or that they would need more to do any activities that they may not do in a daily basis. Would, would, would there be you know published studies that would all already know the answers to these oh, questions? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean there's tons of research. Lots yeah. of stuff. This is much just as much about getting the information into the community that there's people in, in groups trying to bring higher speed service, higher quality service as it is to getting the actual data. If you all aren't on the main broadband coalition. Uh, the information is really good. You just sign up. It's the NBC. You can just Google Main Broadband Coalition, and it gives you all kinds of resources. What's happening around the state? Um, uh, all the studies you want. The state uh, Connect Me also has a website with all kinds of resources and, and research on broadband. Um, so you know you could you could be spending a lot of time, on that, but it's there. It's done. Um, most of it. But what's really interesting is the post pandemic um, experience because people were more, um, I think, um, uh, indifferent to it pre pandemic. But now they understand, more people understand that the speed levels aren't sufficient, especially if everybody, if you have multiple users in the household, cable isn't as reliable and isn't providing what they need. Um, not everybody, but you're seeing more of that kind of response than we would have if we had done this when we first did the first uh, study in 2019. Um, so we're, it, it's an advantage for trying to push it now. Um, Evan, what was your idea about the other two, the next two, nine and 10? Because um, I'm, I'm not sure we need to know this. I mean, it's interesting to know how many people are now working it's at just home. A, just another. When we did it, it was just another important thing of an economic activity where, hey, you've got more people that could be working from home, and especially when they, on 10, would you, would you, if you had better speeds, and the amount of people that said yes, I think it was over two-thirds or even higher than that of people that would do more work from home if they had. I haven't thought about how maybe answer a lot of those questions. So we had if we had two questions where we the first one says what do you use the internet for and then you click all that apply and then the next next yep. one says if you had affordable high speed internet what would you use for and have the same options. Okay, so I do have yeah, yeah, affordable, from a, affordable or higher speeds. Yeah. Uh, town of which one is this one from? Freeman. That's Freeman. Um has one with a list. What functions do you normally perform on your internet? Work from home, education, remote learning, medical, uh, telehealth, entertainment, social networking, photos, Facebook, et cetera, online banking, financial, job searches, uh, general information and communication. That sounds like a pretty good list. I mean, we, we might be able to think of more, but if we do that, then of course the survey gets bigger. So. Just ask the question, let them answer it. What? Just ask the question, let them answer it. You could do that, but say, what that does is if, if they answer it, then you mean like give them an open ended yeah. thing. Yeah, but if you do that, it's actually easier to do it this way because when you get to coding it, well, we got to look at it, then it's just like you got to look at every single sentence yeah, that people it. may have written instead of just fitting people into a box. No, yeah, so, disrespect for the people that don't want to be put into boxes. <laughs> So that, I mean, that's why it's better to anticipate. And then if they have something else, say other, and just do it that way, because it, it would take a lot of time. Meanwhile, so they money to just tally it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, you know, think of it in terms of the being able to report out percentage, you know, sh share with your community. 67% of, of our, you know, respondents say that they, they work from home or something like that. Like those are a lot easier if you've um, given people just, given them the answers and they can fill like 
you can give an other, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, uh, where are we? So we're on those two. Um, I think what they use it for is probably more important than if we put that question in there, what they use it for, then I don't think we need nine and 10. Mm -hmm. We could definitely shorten it up and just have a, you can check multiple boxes situation. And of course, yep. yeah. when are you gonna put this out and how will it be, uh, well, well, the, the people get the get mailings or whatever, but be overwhelmed with political stuff. Sure. We're hoping not to do too many mailings actually. At least, so the, doesn't have internet at least for West Cassidy, anyway, we're going to try to stay away from mailings. Um, yeah. But we definitely have to have it out before June 14th because that would be the one of the best days on primary day to get the word out. Uh, this gentleman over here, you said you like short and sweet introduction. I like that too, because then you get everybody kind of thinking about it, and it's easy for them to start thinking about it. Yeah, we, we could look at that. It's just a question of budget, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, the amount of volunteer time to get it out everywhere, if you don't mail it, is, is huge as well. Going to civic groups, churches, um, you know, the polls, wherever, um, that, that takes a lot of time too. I mean, it could be it could be posted online at the town office. I mean, uh, here it can be posted online. The newspaper said they do it. I think on the speed test. I don't know if they ever put it up there. But we could work harder to get the local paper to do it as well. You remember they were addressed on the communicator? No. That's another place. That, yeah, yeah. You could do that. You could you could, you could reach everybody with that. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, but in in a way that um, unless they want. They need to be able to respond. They need internet to respond. You could gear them to go to the town office, however, and say there's a survey waiting for you at the town office if they have the internet. I like this chat again. I like this channel suggestion to get everybody kind of thinking about it. And the dressing communicator would be an easy way to get people to start to think about it. You know, just I'm not it. sure everybody in town here reads the discussion paper, maybe. But, I don't know. but but the, the that's a, a good point for just that. Yeah, that's the that would, for that for that kind of stuff. Definitely, you guys know your town way better than we do. So it's just like craft it however you think you can get the most responses from it that way for sure. We've just talked about how to do it with Cassett, but yeah, you guys would know the best solutions for Dresden. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You could easily. Yeah. So yeah, definitely feel free to do it differently than whatever we're talking about doing. Right. You could get it. Yeah. You could all approach the subject. Get everybody thinking about it then whatever you yep. follow it up with. and you've got a lot of more people in Dresden that have terrible internet service so there's going to be a lot there's whole neighborhoods and I've got a couple maps I can give you guys that show exactly the neighborhoods to paper before you go anywhere else mm. yeah you'll have any, you should have an easier time to find well, and the Dresden yeah. communicator is free and the town pays for it and everybody gets it from what a concept. <laughs> I, read, I, I read it all the time. Don't tell us casting about that. <laughs> they want us to want to do it too. Did we did we lose your suggestion, Dusty? And now I'm forgetting. Was it to say what they use it for? Was that your suggestion? Yeah, I have the list there. Okay, great. Because that would take it, that would take nine, ten, eleven, and thirteen. We did those questions. Work from home, student at home, streaming services. Streaming services, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we get rid of those. I, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um, this may be repetitive, but I, I um, wonder if it's worth asking. You're, you, you said, did your interest net speed negatively impact your student during the pandemic? Um, I would do you it differently. Say your household or something. In your household. And um, it's a little leading, it's close to one writing so that you do it neutral. So you don't need them, but um, it, you could do it by saying, did your family have adequate broadband for all your family needs um, during the pandemic or now? It, 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 does your family have adequate broadband for all your family needs? Um, I, I think I will avoid the word broadband because a lot of people don't know what it means. Yeah. 
Okay, so I mean, you, you said you have problems with selling things. The selling, <laughs> the selling world, the first thing you establish is the need. Okay. What do these people need? And then you provide what that need is. That's good. Yeah. Okay, and then you punch them with how much it's going to cost. <laughs> you don't start at the bottom and work up, you start at the top and work down. So, um, uh, I, I think you're back in. Use the word internet. Do people understand it, or they don't understand either one? Internet communications, um, entertainment, television is black, locked into all the cable, and somehow that's that's got to come back to it because ninety percent of the people that have internet broadband, communications, broadband, internet, yeah, broadband, internet, 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 all the communications that the kids couldn't get for schooling because it wasn't available because it wasn't put out. If broadband was here, how much easier it would have been to make hotspots or connections for people to get training at home. You know, th those are needs that we don't, you know, we're not talking about. We're talking about what they already have and how does it compare to this. We got to show them that this is important and that we have money it's coming from the federal government that's going to help them provide it. Yeah. And if they don't get on the bandwagon, they're going to they're going to lose it out, and other communities are going to be getting the kids are going to get served better, the businesses yep. are going to get served better. Sounds like a lot of yeah, info sheet. That's, a, big, that's a lot of that's on an info sheet. But the question yeah. is, um, do we ask a question that's more general, like, did your family have adequate broadband? Uh, for all family members during the pandemic and now. Uh, I don't know, I don't I don't like questions that have two parts to it. Because you might say, yes, it had, you know, it didn't have it, but now it does. You Did know, you have like, good internet communications during the during the pandemic? And so during the pandemic. You could ask it very simply. Yeah, yeah keep it a little bit more generic. Um and use internet instead of uh instead of broadband people will right. because in the end result high speed broadband is going to give you better energy right mm -hmm. yeah. one of the same yeah do you, want to know that? What? do you want to know about their quality of internet access just during the pandemic or can, or no well, it was just kind of a thing to be like hey remember how you did when we did it in Scott, it was just kind of Okay, so you probably never thought about this, but when the pandemic hit and the kids are all stuck inside, and now you've got to do three hours of emailing from home, and then all of a sudden, or were they sitting in McDonald's? Right. Get service to the homework. Right. There's also that, but it was mostly just like the same. Everybody was congested all at once because everybody was doing stuff at home. So when you're everybody's on cable in the neighborhood, that affects everybody. It's the same thing, like from a water spigot. You've got less pressure in your shower for everybody. The need right. solution is is broadband. Yeah, we've got to get. So that was the design of the question. It was just to be like. So it, it's not only related like, to this survey, but we if we were highlighting the fact that information sheet and that one page or two introduced this. Is the right, and then have a short survey that you could get back, and when you've got people who are interested, then you can ask them more questions. Um, you can. Uh, it's hard to. You mean you mean a follow up survey? Well, we might have to do that actually as we get more into this, particularly the issue once we get more into it. If we have, if we see from this, there's interest, uh, we're not totally far fetched that this is something to pursue for the town of this castle. Um, ultimately, you're going to want to ask questions. If you were offered, if you could, the payment question, I have it in here, but I'm not sure it belongs at this stage. You know, if you could have high speed. Quality broadband at a, the same or lower price than what you have it now. Yes, but if you had a hundred of those people that you're going to send these surveys to that were in this room, what would be the first questions they were going to ask? What's it going to cost? Yeah, we don't know. Yep. Exactly. You have an we idea. Don't, yeah, but we don't, we don't know. know. Right. So we provide them with a need and a solution to that need, then telling them price might not be so high to take. That's all I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But um, you use the word affordable because what you're trying to get at is if you have the yeah. internet that exists in your house, and don't worry about what it costs because there's ways to help you with the cost of it. So if it's affordable, you know, with yeah. superior capability, 
I mean, right now we might be able to use the word affordable. And I'm, I'm jumping to the end because that's where we asked that question about. Um, I, I was suggesting on my sheet, sheet that um, uh, we might want to. Um, it was the last one I had on my proposed changes that um, if you switch to fiber, assuming that they had an introduction of fiber, a high speed fiber network was, um, if, if it is a guaranteed price or lower than current service. This is vague language because I'm not quite sure how to do it. There's the issue of would you would you jump from what you have now to a different system? That's ultimately what we have to know. It's called the take rate. How many people will take up the service? And we don't know that until our plan is done and we know the cost of it and what a provider will do. It, yeah, but is it if I understand this correctly, if we Get broadband in there, and we get fiber. Everybody's going to get a fiber strand to their house. They're not going to get a cable that they're sharing with everybody. Right. And there's some way that we can put that out there so they know when they get fiber optics, it's just for them. Yep. And it's not going to get interrupted by somebody yeah. else. When we get further down the line, there's going to, we're going to have to do informational meetings and do a lot of outreach. And that's going to be a huge part of this. Do you, you can only serve one customer? You need a fiber for every customer? Yes. That's, that's the end result of all of this. That's what's so good about it. You're not sharing the pipeline. Yeah, and so it's that's 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 a positive. It's got to be associated somehow. Wow. It's infinite. That's, the, that's yep. the thing about fiber. It's like, the, I don't even think we can imagine. Definitely that. agree with you. It's just where that's down the pipe. <laughs> it's further down the pipe. Um, so, and that's why in many ways it's future proof. I mean, people will say, well, how do you know it's not going to be another technology in 10 years? Maybe, but we're not seeing it. And it's hard to get faster than the speed of light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going to have to have another alien crash for the planet to steal the technology again. Yeah. It's so. an internet service provided by wormholes. How does the transition from the dialogue or something? From there to DSL cable. Um, I don't recall there being any sort of community debate. It was just it's sure. there. It's well, there. part of it is because it was privately offered. And it wasn't such a crazy investment jump that the companies weren't going to just do it themselves. So when most of everybody's internet needs were just really simple websites, like if you look at stuff from the 90s and you see pictures of it, like we were using that. And it's like there's so much more dense color spectrum, every so much more data needed to use just general websites now than it was then that it, it was, everything was achievable. But now as we get further down, we're trying to do more and more and more. Everybody in rural areas like Wisconsin address and thing, that's when it's going to take the big jump. And whether we wait for a cable company to switch or the phone company, which may come sometime, someday, someday who knows? We're not they want you to believe they're coming next, you know, in yes. six months. Well, but. We're, yeah. we're not dense enough. That's the issue but the, in rural areas. But yeah, you did, you definitely didn't need a committee because they already had similar technology hanging in the, yeah. in the lines already. So it wasn't too big of a jump. But I mean, if Spectrum thought they could make money on this tacit and Dresden, they would be out there doing it. And some are. I mean, in other parts of, you know, some of the companies that didn't touch Camden or Rockport are now doing it because the least the towns themselves are, are dense enough that they can make money. Um, but that's the issue with why government has to step in is to subsidize it because it's not profitable yet for the private sector in rural areas, particularly. Do, do we want to talk about this like, you know, electricity? Yes, yes, yes absolutely. It should be yeah. thought about as a public utility. And if, in my opinion, it should be publicly owned. It doesn't have to be um, uh, operated by public. That that would, I mean, the way it's happening with municipal broadband is the town owns it, owns it, and then puts out to bid the build out and um, the services, and that's a really good public private model. But what the advantage is, the disadvantage is, the town has to put up money for it. 
the dis the advantage is once you pay off the system, you have a you have an asset that's producing income for the town. And there's lots of examples of research where that's happening around the country. The question is whether people will see it in those economic terms and whether you can make a strong enough case that it's an investment for the town to do that. And it's not 20 years down the road, right? It's, it's doable. Yeah. Right. And the federal government is providing money to people who are prepared to take it. Yeah. If you're not prepared to take it, they won't give it to you. That part's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and right you know, even though we may not be as unserved as other parts of Maine are, which have not been, if we're ready during this period and somebody else isn't, maybe we'll still be considered. That's, that's kind of my <laughs> attitude about it. Um, well, did we get to the end of this? Just to uh, finish the last, what was it, two weeks? So oh, we training can... classes. We have stuff in digital equity. We want to know if people are interested, but it's probably going to take a lot of marketing as well as yeah. a question on, on a survey. Yeah. Did you get much response to that question when you asked? Her? Only probably like 20% of the people answered that or just said, I would say 80% or something said not interested. And then the most interested things that people wanted to know were um, personal cybersecurity, and I think uh, social media and streaming were the other two that were split. So it's actually cybersecurity is something that obviously is in the minds of a lot of senior citizens because that's always a lot of that's always a story in the news that don't believe the scam this week. So always there are to, free classes on this though that help people. Yep. That um, the National Digital Equity Center provides, um, so it can help help make people more aware. So whether or not to, so do keep fourteen. Is, yeah, yeah, I keep fourteen. Fifteen, I just put in as a favor for another guy that was on the committee that did work oh. with <laughs> Lincoln County Television. So they wanted to know, and yeah. I was like, okay, but you're gonna get a, you know. And the last one, I think, is too too premature. You know, do you support us? Because we don't. Well, I think a general, a more general question would be important there. Not necessarily, uh, do you support, but or do you support the town, the towns working to improve internet service that is more affordable and reliable, something like that. I don't know if anybody else thinks. What question is that? Eighteen or sixteen? Rather, sixteen. Sorry. Sixteen. Um, but a general consensus of just yes, people are in favor of the town doing something rather than a familiar thing that we get around here as well. You know, I don't think the people want the town to be involved with this. You hear that a lot with White Island. They say, well, it's been sitting there this long. If nobody said anything yet, then why, you know, people don't want the town involved in that. So there'll be a lot of people that will say things like that. Just leave it alone, let private enterprise deal with it. And we got a little bit, we got back a couple of people responded mm -hmm. at the polls like that. As soon as you said anything about the town getting involved with it, it's like, oh no, or maybe that was our power, one of them. You know, it's, it's, it's the it's private sector does all this. And um, what if you ask the question if the town got involved in this properly and they saved you money in the end result, would you want them involved? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it at this stage. I mean, um, but once we have all the numbers. Yes, but when that, that's the biggest question people are going to ask, assuming yeah, you're answering it, of course, you're going to get there yeah, back. That's true. Do you support town to provide um, affordable, how did you say it, Larry? Affordable, we were using affordable, better quality, faster internet. That yeah, so I just dropped um I dropped Newcastle's draft in the um in the chat, uh, just a Google Doc that you could copy any language from, but their you know their question was do you support the broadband committee's efforts to make future proof high speed internet accessible to all all Newcastle residents? So it's kind of just gauging that that support for a community wide effort. Um and then they had one more question at, at the very end about, um, you know, interested in attending community forums. I don't know how, I, I didn't like that last question, but the number 15 yeah, I actually, thought was really pretty well. Actually, Evan does have that in there. And I was trying to make it more specific, but maybe we don't. Maybe that's what we need right now. Uh, community's efforts for future-proof, high-speed internet. It should have something about affordable in there. I, I might work with Larry on it. 
Because <laughs> you've got a better marketing out? mind than I do. What? what are you trying to find out from that question? If people, I think, support the town getting involved and putting some kind of financial commitment toward some kind of solution, whether it's a muni owned network or if it's a public private partnership. Because there's plenty of people that I think, to Larry's point, that'll be like, well, is the town going to do something? And I don't really want the town, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of, I think Larry yeah, Thomas yeah, if they knew the town might get money back out of it. Yeah. And it might make their tax base go down. Then they'd be interested. Oh, yeah. Then. Yeah, I mean, we need, I would like to do a whole education thing about municipal ownership. And what yeah, I, as and soon as, as he made it clear to me, I was all in. But it's, it's, it's like everything else in the world. Some of the best things in the world are pretty complicated. You've got to learn to understand them. And one-liners don't necessarily yeah. do. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. Um, well, I just wanted to point out that they voted last year to put this committee together. So that, that can be a, a sign of, you know, like a right. piece of that information that we're looking for. The town <laughs> was cast. It was on the line last year. Yeah, the right. question whether or not to put this this committee together okay. to explore this question. And, and right at this point, how many people are, are committed locally to this? If we get us and we get present, is do we know for which has an interest? Or yeah, I invited them, and I yeah, just didn't think that the time worked out. That's that's for our joint work. Of course, it's happening all over the state that people are. But the, the more we show them that we have more people interested in it. We do have joint income working towards that end. I think that would be a positive. Oh, it is definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I um, I've got, I've got a, I have, I have to leave early today. But you guys, I don't have to leave right now. But I need about 15, 20 minutes. Um, but the conversation. I mean, we can work on this, and I'll definitely tap your idea about how to reword some of these that would get people's attention and that we don't overpromise, we don't say something we can't do right now. Um, we do have any money in the budget for survey work, but um, as soon as, as I said, as soon as you get to mailing, especially multiple surveys to any number uh, of people. It, his idea of a short survey with a, a cover sheet of information sounds like it would do a lot of good. We could, we could think about that whether this could be even reduced more and whether that that method would be a better one to do than getting something like this out at this point in time. We could hand it out from the schools, the chamber of commerce, we could have probably have a presentation there, the senior center, the American Legion, Wellington. Yeah, we, we have to make a there. Yeah, <laughs> churches. I mean, to me, getting a hundred information key balance. Yeah, not worth the time and effort. Um, I do have a document. I don't know if people who are better at um, organizing outreach and marketing, but I can get this. I mean, there's the one from North Carolina that was similar, but there were all kinds of suggestions in here of how to do it and how to get information from people to follow up with them. Um, and, um, you know, I, it's, it's more than I. Um, aside from the paper surveys, other ways of doing it as well. So one of them says, set up a Google phone number to publicize it. I don't know how much something like that costs, no. but- um, No, 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 no. To, to, to a point, I agree with you that we've got to go to paper because a lot of people that need the information. Yep. They don't have any other means to get it. Yep. Right. We're going to do that. The suggestion on Google is because it's free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Google yeah. Voice is free. So. And, and, and if you can get people to write articles I mean, I think I haven't got a chance to read it. I think there's something in the Lincoln County News or the Wisconsin paper about broadband, which I didn't get a chance to read. Today? Or? Uh, this came out Wednesday. Okay, I'll wait for it. And, but if we get expound upon whoever's doing that to give them more information, if it goes out and, and people get it fed to them for free, well, basically, newspapers, for you know, yeah, and this one talks about using cash incentives. That's been used a lot to get people, but we don't have but a lot mail, of money. Mail, mailings are expensive. Yeah. I've tried it on other things. Yeah, that's um, what we were trying to stay away from because of the low turnout from 
But it's going to take a lot of effort of the committee and, and this. Do you know somebody who's a really good wordsmith that could do a letter to the editor and send it to the Bath paper, KJ, and Lincoln, and Wisconsin, and the Coastal Journal, and anybody that would take it? If you've got somebody that's put out something with a lot of interest. Well, there, there's <coughs> been a lot of stuff on broadband, certainly the major papers. But your point is to try to bring it to local level. Mm -hmm. um, to get it to run other people around here if you can. For free, right. basically. Right. You can do right. Press, press releases. Yep. Yeah. What's that? You can do a press release. Well, you, any, anytime you, this committee yeah. does anything. Yep. Yeah. I think you have no trouble to talk to the people. Thanks for coming here to talk to us. Oh, yeah. I think so, he's a man to talk to. Yeah. Because he's really he cares about this community as much as any writer we've ever had. So I would say that the work at hand, we've got to put out, once you guys get your process going and get the money to do joint contracts, we've, been, we've wanted to wait because we'll all benefit from lower prices. But um, I would say in the meantime, um, that um, the communications and outreach really is where we're at right now. So I don't know if we want to, this committee to be the outreach committee, <laughs> the communications committee, and whether we want to think about bringing on some other people in town that know this stuff. I always got a, it sounds like you've got a lot of experience doing this on various well, organizations, I, I, or some of it's just common sense. But do we know anybody that could also help us with this in town? Um, who's good at it? I mean, and particularly on this topic, I know we know people that know how to do media and marketing, but on, on who would be good on this the broadband issue. I'm looking at Richard. Sarah might be able to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah Sarah said she'd look at the survey for sure. Um, but it's the She's it's the marketing. The communication lines that people can access. Yeah. Now who's the gal that does the communication, the, the teaching? To teach his classes. Oh, um, uh, Maria. There. Well, she's in charge of all the classes. Are you talking about digital IT classes? Mm -hmm. um, Maria Fairfield from this castle. Or is it Mary Ellen Barnes? No, Mary, Mary Ellen doesn't do classes. Um, Maria, the National Digital Equity Center hires people to do classes on digital equity, but it's not so much on the importance of broadband, it's on particular skills. Right. And um, that is all part of what we would do under a digital equity plan to reach out to the community on trying to help bring people's levels of um, skills up and doing it for free um, and directing them to the digital equity center if they have broadband. They can't do that unless they're online because all their classes now are online. But um, um, <clears throat> Right now, what we need is marketing this project and all the suggestions in the survey is one tool. The suggestions of where we show up, who we talk to, presentations, all of that is part of it. But the written communications of how we message this, um, I think we could use some help um, with people. I don't know. I mean, we can ask around, but nobody in town is jumping out at me. Um, for a particular messaging on this. Tracy Joyce. I'm sorry, who? Tracy Joyce. Who's that? Tracy. Tom Joyce's wife. She, oh. is, she uh, puts out the uh, newsletter for the library. And um, um, she's a little smart lady. Maybe we could talk to her to see if she could help us on. Um, I mean, I'll have. I'll be, I'll be asking around as well, and people know, but I mean, I just don't know who would be good. Some towns hire people. I mean, you know, Blackport has somebody under contract, you know, to, to do marketing, but they're further along than we are. We're just at the initial stage of trying to get interest and in, communicate what this is about. Should, should we be, um, Accumulating a mailing list, an emailing list of people that are interested in this stuff, sure. or so we could have a simple email yeah. newsletter. Sure. Because that, that's really cheap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that would be great.
Um, the other thing, I don't know, there seems to be interest here in a municipal option for this. I sent out to, um, I think it was for the last meeting we had on the 7th, I sent out the slides that you gave me from the Diamond Dam Scott mm -hmm. on what this what a muni option is. I thought the slides were great, and he was no expert on this. He just put it together from his own interest. Unfortunately, Dan Scott didn't go ahead with that. Um, but um, if you're interested, I can certainly share that with you. Because uh, if we get further down the line, we're, we're, we're definitely going to want to be fluent. Um, what that option is, along with other options. So um, I can, um, do, you, do we have your emails? Um, <laughs> yeah, we should get your emails. Peter? Yeah. At, that last name is Gaxi, G A C Z I dot com. G A C Z I dot com. Okay, and Judy, it's, um, I think you've emailed me. Yeah. Judy at Tunkle dot com. Tunkle. Um, and Don, where is this? Don dot Gleason, G L E A S O N M E dot com. I'm sorry, at M E. At M E dot com. And it, it was just Don Gleason, no, no one word. One Don word. dot. Dot. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it would be good to share some of that stuff. And I'll share a couple of websites that. Are, are really good on this. The Institute for Local Self-Reliance has for you know a long time focused on broadband and municipal broadband if you're interested. Um, I can I can read stuff that's technical and point out maybe easier ways. Are you the one that did the stuff on um, the power um, on there was a scientist, I thought it was just but he said he knew this people. There was a one scientist that tore apart um, um, uh, the proposal for, um, um, you know, uh, CMP, the power lines and stuff like that. You didn't do that. Well, Somebody else did it. No. Okay. I, I was confused. I was going to ask you that. But I, I deal with um, secretaries and customers and that kind of stuff all the time. So I'm pretty good at uh, seeing things that people can't understand cannot understand in technical writing and finding smoother ways to say <laughs> great a resource <laughs> terrific okay yeah um so um i gotta leave you guys can keep talking but i think getting this um we got an hour and 15 in i think that's good for now the yeah. only thing i'd say we're planning on meeting on may the 5th well, what time and that's all we were going to discuss. Are we going to 2 30 all the time or 11? Uh, May 5th is the next meeting. That I have. Okay, so 2 30 works for everybody. I, I, I can't remember if that's my hair appointment day. <laughs> I, 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 I never get up my hair appointment because I can't get it back, but um, that's okay if, we, if, you know, if you guys care more. Yep. Can you say that again? What day it was? May 5th, Thursday. May 5th. Five, five. Thursday, and I'm going to go use the board. Here. Get all those numbers.